Good morning, my fellow scientists. It's Wednesday, March 8th, 2017, and I want to talk more about droplet microfluidics using acrylic and laser cutting. I made some video today about the process I've refined to actually cut the laser chips and to fabricate the final microfluidic device. I'm not 100% there, but it's getting a lot closer. I have managed to get channels of about 100 microns uh, in diameter or width to seal and fill. They're still not as consistent as I'd like, but I suspect that's probably due to the low quality laser cutter. Anyway, without further ado, here's the process for making laser cut microfluidic chips using a K40 laser cutter and acrylic. So first put on our safety goggles. They are OD6 for the 10,000 nanometer laser light that uh, this particular cutter emits. We're going to arm the laser. That's the only safety interlock on this device. That's one of the reasons why the quality is a little suspect. Then you hit go on the computer and you can see the laser start to cut. When you see those bright flashes, those are the backing paper below the acrylic burning away. So that means that we've got a full through cut when you see that. Now if we don't want a full through cut, if we just want a partial cut as for the fluid channels, we need to make a whole new file with that particular design. So I've got a couple of squares here that I'm going to cut at a slightly different setting, which I'll change on the software. There we go. And then I'll also change it on the laser so that we don't cut all the way through. We just cut a partial cut. Hit go, and you can see that for the most part, we don't see those bright uh, flashes. When you do see that little light flash, that's where the channel overlaps with the through cut that I made before. Okay, disarm the laser, and when you're done cutting all of your all of your lines and your through cuts, you can pull out the substrate. And if you've cut around your pieces, you can just pull one of those out. And you can see that there are lines cut into the surface and it's got through holes that I've cut all the way through the acrylic. Now those through holes leave a little plug of acrylic, so I use a syringe needle to pop that out. And I've, I've set my substrate on a pair of pliers so you can see the little plug that comes out more easily. It's also good to push against a void space to where the plug can come out easily. But there it is, the little plug sitting in the groove of those pliers. The whole thing gets sandwiched in this uh, heated press along with a piece of plastic to cover the channels and that seals the whole thing into one unified device that looks like this. And I've got a fluid line plumbed up to one of the holes without uh, any glue so you can see it's starting to leak there. But it fills all the way through. We get good sealing. Unfortunately not on one of those branches of the four branches. Uh, one, one didn't work. If you want to see why you look at the microscope and you can see the, that north branch is just too narrow to make a good fluidic connection, but it's still a significant improvement over what we were getting before, which is where where maybe two of the four branches even exist after sealing. So there it is, whole process for making these chips. Uh, I hope that was amusing. We're not 100%, but hopefully with a little refinement of the channel depth and the sealing time, we can get it to where all of the channels fill equally and then we can start making droplets again uh, with a little bit more consistent chip setup. Tune in next time for more about laser cutting, open source science, and microfluidics here in the Allen Lab.